You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast Network. You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast, the most listened to daily Miami Dolphins podcast on the internet. Come on, Dolphins fans. Time to fins up. Good evening, Miami Dolphins fans. How are you today? And thank you for listening to the DolphinsTalk.com podcast on this Thursday, February the 22nd. I'm your host, Mike Oliva, flying solo today. And we got a bunch to talk about in the world of the Miami Dolphins. We got some news on Teron Armstead. We got the ESPN report on Christian Wilkins. We'll dive into that and a few other things. We have a potpourri of subjects, as they say, in the world of the Miami Dolphins. But before we get to any of that, as always, a big shout out to everyone listening at finheaven.com. Everyone go to finheaven.com, the largest Miami Dolphins message board on the internet. <clears throat> and a big shout out to everyone listening at the I Am a Miami Dolphins fan Facebook page run by the great and talented Carlos Hernandez. If you're on Facebook, please be sure you are a part of the I Am a Miami Dolphins fan Facebook page. And wherever you're listening to this podcast, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Podchaser, YouTube, Audible, we're on all the platforms, Podchaser, Podbean, you name it, we're on it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you go to our Apple Podcast page, leave us a five-star rating, and write a positive review. I will read it on the air and give you a shout-out. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is just about to go out. Not a good time at the start of the show. Um, and uh, you, you will want to make sure you are subscribed to the podcast because next few weeks there's going to be a lot of bombs dropped in the world of offense. Some players cut. Some players maybe having a franchise tag put on them, which we'll talk about here shortly. And a lot of big news on guys who might get new extensions to lower their cap number. And once that news breaks – you want to be notified um, when a new show drops on your smart device. You can listen and get all the dirt and all the details on the latest with the Miami Dolphins. So subscribe to DolphinsTalk.com podcast. Okay, let's start with Christian Wilkins, the ESPN report from Dan Graziano, a very respected reporter that was on NFL Live on Wednesday. I'm going to play the report so you can hear it straight from the horse's mouth so there's uh, no confusion. Um, I'm just going to play the first half because the second half is a Christian is a Christian Wilkins analysis from Booger McFarland, which is pointless. But I'll play the Dan Graziano part, and we'll go over that because his wording is not as cut and dry. I had to listen to it a few times. It's not as cut and dry as I thought the first time I heard it. But I think the point he is making is still generally there. So let's uh, hear from Dan Graziano from Wednesday's ESPN NFL Life decisions on prior to the March 5th deadline. So let's take a look at a couple of those players as we read and react. We're going to start in Miami. Dan Graziano, what's the latest you're hearing on Christian Wilkins? Dolphins don't plan to let Christian Wilkins leave, and if that means franchising him, that's likely what they'll do. The problem is Dolphins are in pretty big cap trouble. Uh, as of right now, they're projecting to be $50 million or more over the cap once that cap is finally settled. Uh, and, and they would have to clear that much room just to get under the cap. And if they tag Wilkins, they got to clear another $20, 21000000 million to get him under the cap. So a lot of work to do before they can do that. They might be better off signing him long term before the window ends. Interesting. Uh, Booker, what? How can... All right, nobody nobody needs to hear from Booger McFarland. So Dan Graziano said, Dolphins don't plan to let Christian Wilkins leave, and if that means franchise tagging him, that's likely what they'll do. I think – now, he did leave himself some wiggle room there with his wording. That's likely what they'll do. He's not saying that is what they'll do. And I think some people are reading into that. Not everyone. I think most people are hearing the same thing, that the Dolphins – literally the first sentence he said, the Dolphins don't plan – to let Christian Wilkins leave. And to me, that is the big story here from this report. And it comes down to what do the Dolphins do? Are they going to give him a long-term contract extension, lower his cap number, which is the best avenue for the Miami Dolphins, and it helps their salary cap situation? Or are they going to just franchise tag him and and then really start to do some heavy lifting when it comes to the salary cap? I don't have that answer. But 
it comes down to this. If Miami does have to use the franchise tag on Wilkins to not let him leave, if that's the plan, per Dan Graziano, who, once again, very well respected, very well plugged in in NFL circles and breaks a lot of big stories. So when he says something like this, you know, don't just blow it off. Oh, you don't know what he's talking about. You make it up. He's a real deal. So if Miami has to use a franchise tag on Wilkins, in my opinion, it's very, very bad. Like, it's really bad for a lot of reasons. Um, and I'm not talking about the tag and trade. I mean, just flat out, we're going to tag them, and we're going to make them play next year on that 20, 21 million franchise tag, and then we'll worry about this a year from now. To me, I think there's a lot there that works against Miami. Now, look, the positive is obvious. He's a superstar player, and for 2024, he's going to be on the field. He's going to help your team win games. That's a good thing. That's obviously the positive about this. The downsides, though, there's a lot. Number one, he was unhappy last year when he didn't get a long-term deal, and he and he didn't get that financial stability long-term to the point where he held a sit-in. A lot of fans forget this. Last year, OTAs, training camp, all that good stuff, he held a sit-in in training camp where he showed up, he'd stretch, he'd run his laps, then he'd go sit on the sidelines and did not participate in no drills, no contact drills, didn't play any preseason games. He held a sit-in because you can't just not show up because then the fines rack up quickly and there's no way out of those fines. You have to pay them. They got rid of the loopholes. So he showed up and held a sit-in so he wouldn't get fined. He did that last year. If they make him play on a franchise tag this year, he's going to be even more unhappy. It's going to be more of a headache for the Dolphins as they try to get ready for the 2024 season. Oh, by the way, with your front seven, this summer already won't have Jalen Phillips in training camp and Bradley Chubb in training camp and Andrew Van Ginkle might not be on the roster. We don't know yet, so he might not be there. If Wilkins just is not participating, um, I don't know how you get ready for the season when you just have that many guys not active in practices. That's number one. Number two, he is your biggest and most vocal leader on this team. For a lot of teams, it's the quarterback. And this is not a knock on Tua, so don't read it that way. In Miami, it is Christian Wilkins. He's the leader. When the team scores an offensive touchdown, he's the first one to run to the end zone to celebrate with him. He's the one who gives, not every week, but gives a lot of pregame speeches to the team to sort of get everyone pumped up, ready to go most weeks. He's that guy. And if he enters the year with the boo-boo face, I don't want to be here, I'm pissed off, I can't believe they're not paying me, that is an attitude and a virus that will spread to the rest of the locker room. If your most vocal leader's not happy, everyone's going to sort of take that on as well. And they're going to be like, well, if he's not happy, you know, I mean, it's just that's not – that doesn't make for a healthy locker room at all, especially when it's your top dog, which Christian Wilkins is. Also, the message of this sends to the other young players on the Dolphins who have contracts coming up soon – like a Javon Holland, like a Jalen Waddle, like a Jalen Phillips, and the you know the guys who are due for big money paydays here in the next you know twelve months or so really, and big payday extensions, uh, they're going to see this and go, they drafted this guy, they are paying this guy, this guy's miserable here every day because um, he's forced to play on this franchise tag. Um, what are they going to do to me? And what are my options? And don't think Holland, Waddle, Jalen Phillips. Now, with two of those guys, they have to fit their option. They they might be in the same unfortunate situation here as Wilkins, who maybe you get to fit their option one year. Then maybe the next year you get tagged, and you're trapped. You can't go. You can't get that big payday. But, A, the Dolphins don't want that rep about them, where other players who might want to come to mind are like, oh, these guys, once you're there, <laughs> they don't treat you well. Um, there's that, and plus – it might, you know, have those guys become more open-minded to possibly say, you know what, I might have to keep some options open here to leave because I don't know if they're treating Wilkins this way and everyone loves big Christian. How are they going to treat me? It's just bad. That's the point here. It's just bad. The Dolphins need to figure out a way to get Christian Wilkins on a long-term deal to make him happy, to have him on the field this summer in training camp when you're, when you're already not going to have Chubb or you're not going to have – Jalen Phillips, you might not have. and th- You need him happy and on the field this summer and ready to go, not just for 2024, but for years to come. So I know the report was the Dolphins don't plan to let Christian Wilkins leave. 
And if that means franchising him, that's likely what they'll do. I get it. They don't want to see this guy walk out the door, and I don't want to see him walk out the door either. But if they can get a long-term deal worked out and they're in the ace in their pocket is, well, we'll just franchise tag him and he's got to stay, that's not going to create a healthy environment in South Florida. That, I think, is something that would hover over this team all season. So, again, that report, Dan left himself some wiggle room there and how he worded it. He's a, he's a smart guy. He's been, he been, he been playing this game. He didn't come out and say the Dolphins 100% will use a franchise tag and he will 100% play for Miami. He didn't say that. But the heart of the story is the Dolphins don't want to let this guy go. But the other part that Dan – mentions in this is the salary cap issue, which is a big issue that the Dolphins are facing now as they head into this March 13th day here, start of the new league year, where they have to be at the cap. Right now they're roughly 50 million over. I don't have it down to the exact penny. We're going to use, you know, broad numbers here. They're roughly 50 million over the cap. The cap went up a little bit, so that might be down to roughly 40 plus million over the cap. We know what we're talking about, okay? Now let's say for argument's sake, they don't give to a long-term deal by March 13th. Maybe it takes them longer. Maybe it takes to April or May or June to get that worked out. That means two is counting on the cap for 23 million next year. So that means you have to cut that 40 plus 50 million bucks just to get to the cap. That's with two accounting 23 million at the moment. Then if you want to use the franchise tag on Wilkins, you have to cut another 20 million. So now you're cutting between 40 and 50 million just to get to the cap. Then you got to cut another 20 million. So now you have to cut between 60 and 70 million just to use the franchise tag on Christian Wilkins because you can't put it on him and not have the cap space for it. Because right now he does not count on the cap. He is not under contract. But the minute they put the franchise tag on him, that's another $21 million you have to allocate under the cap. So the Dolphins realistically have to cut if they want to tag Christian Wilkins today and they that window is open for the franchise tag. They can tag him. Maybe by the time some of you are listening to this, he might have been tagged, but they have till March 5th. So between now and March 5th, they can put the franchise tag him on, on him at any time. After March 5th, he's gone. He's a free agent. They don't have to, or they can't. Um, but let's just say they are. That means they have to cut between 60 and $70 million by March 13th on the cap. And that's just to get to the cap and use a franchise tag. That means you have no money to sign – or try and re-sign Andrew Van Ginkle, Raekwon Davis, Robert Hunt, Connor Williams, or literally any of the wide receivers, which is like all of them except for the top two, to sign to bring back. You don't have money. So that's why it is imperative for the Dolphins to either give to a long-term deal by March 13th to lower his cap number or to get Christian Wilkins a long-term deal by March you know, 13th, really, but by the 5th would be ideal. Um, to lower his cap number this year, so it's not 20, 21 million on the cap. Maybe year one is only like eight, and because because they're not going to have March 13th. Technically, March 11th is the start of the legal tampering period. So March 11th becomes a wild, wild west. Even though nothing's official, guys are going to be like, well, so and so met with the Cincinnati Bengals and they and they agreed to terms in principle. You're not going to hear any of that with Miami. Because you can't cut everybody and get like $100 million. <laughs> That's not going to happen. So they got some tough decisions that are going to have to be made in days. Like it's February 22nd, March 5th franchise tag. March 13th, you got to be under the cap. And I know some of the stuff's easy. Cut Xavier Howard. But even that money won't open up to post June 1st. Cut Emmanuel Agba. I get it. Cut Jeff Wilson. I get it. There's easy one. Ground balls to clear cap space. But they got to cut a lot of cap space to just be able to be in the game, to use a franchise tag, and to sign other players. And the clock's ticking. As I said, the clock is ticking. So Tua Christian Wilkins, that's why I said when I did the show last week, Tua's got all the leverage. Yeah, because if Tua gets paid, he doesn't care what month he gets paid in. But if you're the Dolphins, you don't want to let, you know, the first three weeks of free agency go by and all the, you know, Good players have new homes, and then we gave Tua a long-term deal on April 20th. A great free agency's pretty much over. Now you're looking at guys who are scrubs. You know, now you're looking at the Eli Apples of the world, and you don't want to have to sign those guys for key spots 
Um, so March 13th really is the big day. Really, it's March 11th, but that's the big time here. The Dolphins got to make some stuff here. Again, we all want Christian Wilkins back. But if it's a franchise tag that does have a domino effect, it does have a ripple effect that I don't think is very good. So I really hope that Chris Greer and Christian Wilkins can agree on, <laughs> excuse me, on a long-term deal. Um, that's the best for everybody. Uh, we'll see. And there is another aspect of this, which I haven't talked about because I just don't know. And here's the thing. Nobody knows. Christian Wilkins might be asking for, like, outrageous money. Like, if he's asking for, like, $28 million a year, he ain't worth it. If he's asking for $24, $25, there's probably a way Miami can make that work. And I know it's not even all about the average per year. It's more about the total guaranteed money. But if Christian Wilkins is asking for some outrageous number, I can see why the Dolphins can say, well, we've tried and we can't pay him unreasonably. We have to use the tag for one more year to keep him at 20 or 21 million. I get that. I totally get that. And maybe that's the case. Maybe that was the case last year. Maybe this is not the fault of Chris Greer at all. Maybe he's offering like 22, 23 million a year, which is more than fair. But Christian Wilkins and his agent, like, we want 28, 29. Well, I mean, I don't care how much you love the guy, you're not paying him that much because he ain't worth it. So I get it. This might be on Wilkins more than Greer in Miami. And if it is, it's unfortunate, but it puts Miami in a pickle and that that salary cap space they need now. They can't wait to May or June. They need it now in the next few weeks. Um, it's going to make it interesting. So we'll monitor this as I think news out. Look, by March 5th, we're going to know if he gets a franchise tag put on him and which one it, it, if there's no long-term deal worked out. But that Dan Graziano report from Wednesday was very interesting. It was really the first new news we've had on this in weeks. So there's that. Um, let's talk about Toronto Armstead. Yes, we had new news on that as well. After the season, Armstead said, you know, he was contemplating retirement. Maybe he wouldn't play this upcoming year. Maybe he'd hang it up because he has had a lot of injuries uh, from his time in the NFL, which I get. It's a tough sport. And each year it seems like the injuries start to mount more and more. Um, so Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald, again, very tight end, very respected reporter, said he was told the full expectation is that Armstead will play next season. Now, he didn't say Armstead would play in the NFL, uh, well, that, that Armstead would play in Miami, but you can read between the lines here. Because of the contract Armstead has, he's playing in Miami. I think $5 million of his contract or so is already guaranteed, so Dolphins aren't going to cut someone who they've already written a check for for $5 million. And then on March 16th, which is three days after the start of the new league year, his contract becomes fully guaranteed. So if Armstead's going to play next year, which from all this – um, reporting he is. He's going to play on the Dolphins. I know a lot of Dolphins fans are really down on Armstead. They don't want to see him out there. He's only going to give you seven or eight games. It's all true. He, you can only bake on this guy for seven or eight games at this point, and it is what it is. But for those seven or eight games, he's going to play at an elite level. The problem is you got to have something in your back pocket ready to go when he can't go. Now, Kendall Lamb is also a free agent this year, so the way he played last year was very good. Teams might overpay him or offer him more money to where Miami doesn't have the cap space to match. So if Lamb is gone, who's the backup tackle? Now, there's two options here. Number one, Keon Smith's already on the roster. They think very highly of him. At times, he did step in and play last year at either left or right tackle. He was okay. Not going to say he was great, but he wasn't awful either. He was okay. Now, is, is that a guy you want having to start maybe nine or ten games for you next year? No. But he's okay. Not the best option. What I think the Dolphins might do, it's a might. And it's tough with the draft because it's so far away right now. And I know Dolphins fans are so hyper-focused on the center from Oregon in round one or taking a guard center and fixing the interior of the offensive line around round one. And I get it. I know why. Connor Williams probably going to miss the first six, eight weeks next year. He's a free agent. You don't want to pay him a lot of money if the guy's not going to play for half the year. They need to do something. Nobody wants to see Liam Eikenberg at center again. I get it. I get it. But I don't see Chris Greer drafting the center in round one. You look at Chris Greer's draft history since 2020 when he took over. Five premium positions. Quarterback, cornerback, offensive tackle, wide receiver, edge rusher. Two up premium position. No up premium position. 
Um, Austin Jackson, premium position. Hunt, when he drafted him, supposed to be a right tackle, premium position. Raquan Davis did it, but again, when you it's your fifth pick in the first two rounds, you can have some fun with it. The next year, Waddle, premium position. Jalen Phillips, premium position. Liam Eikenberg is supposed to be a right tackle of the future after Hunt failed. He, premium position when he was drafted, at least. Holland, again, when you're on pick number four in the first two rounds and pick number nine in the past two drafts in the first two rounds, you can have some fun with it. So there. Then Cam Smith also in round two, premium position. Chris Greer in the first two rounds, 99% of the time is only drafting guys at premium positions. Center and guard ain't a premium position. So when you get to round, when you get to your picks in rounds one or two, the smart money's on. He taken, it won't be a quarterback, so he's taken either a wide receiver, an offensive tackle, a cornerback, or an edge rusher. Now, you Armstead's here next year. Miami can move on from him after this year, and that's probably their goal. If they take an offensive tackle in round one, you can play him at guard for a year like they did with Laramie Tunsil when they took him. They didn't need Laramie Tunsil, but he fell in their lap. So if the right offensive tackle is there that you love, you can take him in round one or round two, uh, play him at left guard for a year because Isaiah went, he don't need to come back. Um, he's, and then after this year, you slide him out to offensive tackle. Chris Greer can get his premium position guy with a left tackle, have a left tackle of the future, but for year one he plays left guard. And then I don't know what they do at center. I'm sure they could sign someone who's a free agent. Maybe they re-sign Connor Williams on some sort of a deal because he's hurt. Maybe they get him at a cheap rate and you play Liam Meikenberg for half the year. I know nobody wants to see it, but that could be their situation. Um, I just don't see them drafting a center guard in rounds one or two. I could be wrong. Uh, But I do see the possibility of an offensive tackle in rounds one or two, plays guard for a year, and move on. So Armstead will be back, and there's that. Uh, Jalen Watt, I'm spending like three seconds on this, folks. Okay, look, this is why I hate social media, and I cannot emphasize hate enough. ESPN is trying to fill content. This is one of the worst weeks for them all year You because there's no NBA games this week after the All-Star game. I mean, there's games now starting now, but there's no NBA games at the start of the week. The NFL season's over. Major League Baseball, p- people are just showing up to camp, and nobody cares about the NHL. So they have literally those shows like First Take, Get up, um, Colin, like all those shows where they just have people on to debate topics. There's nothing to debate because nothing's really happening this week. And ESPN tries to do a fun little segment, and that's all they're doing because they got to kill time. ESPN get ups on two hours every morning, five days a week, year round. They got to kill time. And if there's nothing going on, they still got to find a way to kill time. So they do a fun segment where they take Mike Tannenbaum and they go, make. Come up with some trades that would work for both teams. It's not supposed to be serious. They're just having fun on TV. Of course, he comes up with a few. He's like, the Browns should trade Watson to the Giants for Jones and throw in some pick, blah, blah, blah. This team, he tried to trade um, Zach Wilson. Like, anyone's going to trade for Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson to the Broncos for Jerry Judy. I mean, it's not serious. It's not that serious. And then, of course, Jalen Waddell to the Chiefs for Trent McDuffie. And social media blows this up and makes it way more important than it needs to be. And then you got Tyree Kill and players chiming in, and they're all in their feelings hurt about this. We're not trading Waddle. Why does everyone want? Nobody wants to trade Waddle. Nobody's trading Waddle. It's a fun segment on TV that fans got all in their feelings, players got in their feelings, and they just, you know, express themselves on social media like children. It's not happening. You, you want to know why it's not happening? Because Kansas City doesn't need Jalen freaking Waddle, and they're not trading Trent McDuffie. You know why? They've won two Super Bowls without a number one wide receiver the past couple of years, and it's harder to find an elite cornerback than it is to find an elite wide receiver. they got to pick around one or two. They can take a wide receiver who may be as good or close to as good as Jalen Waddle, and they'll be perfectly happy. The odds of them finding a cornerback this year in round one, at the end of round one, who would be anywhere close to as good as Trent McDuffie is slim to none. So they're not – nobody's trading for Waddle. It's a fun segment on TV. Everyone blew up and made way more of it than it needed to be because it's a slow week in TV, and everyone, nobody's trading Waddle. And it's mainly because Kansas City don't, wouldn't take the trade anyways. Miami probably run and make the trade, but it's not like they're out there shopping them. It's just one guy on TV coming up with some fantasy trade scenario. So 
Just wanted to kill that, nip it in the bud. Last topic, Xavier Howard. Xavier Howard. Oh, our friend Xavier Howard. Dolphins are going to cut him. The money is going to be freed up uh, post June first. It'll be a post June first designation as they need the as they need the cap space, and that's the smartest way to do it with Howard. And look, Xavier Howard has been a great, not a good, a great Miami Dolphin. I know the last two years his play has slipped a little bit. Players say he's hurt all the time. Guy played like 15 games one year, 13 years. Yeah, he missed a few games. The more the NFL keeps adding games, the guys are going to miss games. Just because you miss one or two games doesn't make you always injured. He's not been always injured. But Xavier Howard, you know, has had some great seasons with the Dolphins, made a lot of great plays with the Dolphins, helped the Dolphins win a lot of games. It's going to be sad to see him go, um, the player. But it's understandable as well. He is getting a little older. The past two years, his play has slipped a little bit, and he's not worth the contract that he has and what he's making. So it's totally understandable why they're letting him go. I have no problem with it either. But it's easy just to cut a guy and open up cap space. The problem is how the hell do you replace him? Because you look at this Miami Dolphins roster right now, look, we hope Cam Smith is good. We don't know. Cam Smith might be the next Noah Igbenogany. He could be the next Cordrea Tankersley. We don't know. He might stink on toast. But he might be great, too. Who knows? Sam Madison, he could be next Sam Madison or Patrick Sertan. We don't know. Um, and since we don't know, you can't just bank on him. Oh, just throw him out there. He's the other guy who's now going to start opposite Ramsey. Um, you got to have other pieces in play here. Cater Kohu was great as a rookie. He was bad last year, folks. You look at the numbers. Cater Kohu was not a good corner last year. And he's mainly a nickel guy anyway. You don't want him outside on the boundary. Hence, look at the Bills game when he had to, when he had to cover Stephon Diggs in October. Um, so I don't know if he's an answer. Nobody wants to bring back Eli Apple, but the Dolphins are in salary cap trouble. It might be Cam Smith, Eli Apple, trying to fill that void opposite Ramsey. Or if it's not Eli Apple per se, it might be an Eli Apple type, another aging veteran whose best days are behind him. So. You know, it's easy to say, cut Howard. He stinks. I don't want to pay him anymore. Great. You can say that. And he's and he's gone, like 99% gone. But replacing him is going to be a lot harder, especially with the limited salary cap that Miami has. They're not going to go out there and sign a big-time free agent. I mean, if they did, great. I'm all for it. I just don't see how they can afford it um, or who it would be. Um, a trade? I don't know. Are you going to draft a rookie in round one? I mean, it wouldn't be the worst pick in the world Honestly, but you just took Cam Smith around two last year, and you just paid Ramsey a ton of money, and you, and you gave up a third round pick for him. I mean, how many picks and how much money are you going to invest in corner? So I think for the Dolphins, Xavier Howard, easy to cut, tough to replace, really is the storyline for the Dolphins. And we better light can if you're a Dolphins fan, and if you're listening to this, you are like me. Light candles, say rosaries, say prayers to whoever your God is that Cam Smith is good because if he ain't, the Dolphins' cornerback room is going to be in rough shape in 2024 because Jalen Ramsey can't guard everybody. You can move him around the field all you want. He can't cover everybody. There's a lot of teams in this league that have three wide receivers and great tight ends, and they're going to have favorable matchups. You know, Howard might not be as great as he once was. He's still damn good, okay, better than most. But if he's gone, like we think he will be, the Dolphins, I hope they got a plan to replace him. Um, so that's another one to keep an eye on here in free agency as we get closer because I don't, there's a lot of holes on this Dolphins. What makes this Dolphins offseason so challenging is not just the cap number and trying to get under the cap and then we'll, whatever happens with Tua and Wilkins. It's that going into next year, you know, you're not going to have Bradley Chubb for three quarters of the year. You know, you're not going to have Jalen Phillips for probably half the year. And that first September, October next year, that might stink for you know for the Dolphins until those guys can get back on the field or at least have a time frame to when they might be back. And you know, you gotta somehow find guys to fill their shoes the first part of next year if you want to win. And on top of that, you gotta fill all these other holes. Like, what do you do at cornerback with Howard gone? What do you do if Andrew Van Ginkle leaves? 
What do you do if Hunt and Connor Williams leave? Like, there's a it's it's a big game of whack a mole, and the Dolphins don't have a ton of money. Even if they cut all these, you know, they can cut Agba, Howard. They can cut all these guys, free up a ton of money. Jeff Wilson, free up a ton of money, and they can restructure Hill, restructure Ramsey, open up more money. It's still a lot of new faces that would have to come in um, that you'd have to integrate and. Not all of them are going to be as good as what you lost. Like, you can replace a Andrew Van Ginkle with someone who probably makes half the money he's going to get, but will he be as good? Because if he's not as good, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, you can replace Xavier Howard. Get someone who's going to make maybe half the money or a third of the money he is. Is he going to be as good? We don't know. So that was going to make this offseason interesting. And why Chris Greer has a lot of work to do here. Uh, between now and the draft. And it's going to be interesting to see how he navigates this. Um, I'm sure they can navigate the cap situation. But once they navigate that cap situation and they have however much money that they can spend, who do they spend it on and who are they targeting? Where do they see the big holes on this team? I know fans, y'all think offensive line first. I think you might be looking in the wrong spot. I think he's, I think he's looking at edge rusher. I think he's looking at corner, and I think he's looking at wide receiver because after Hill and Waddle, we saw real quick last year when one goes down and when they both go down, it's a house of cards, and the passing game really suffered. I think he's looking at those three spots because, as we know, when it comes to the offensive line, there's this. Well, I think you guys are probably more worried than we are <laughs> you know, in terms of you know, um, at the position depth at those uh, spots you talked about. but. All right, so that's how I guess I'll end the show. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. Like I said, I should have an interview either Friday or Saturday with someone. Um, it will be a very interesting conversation for sure. And as soon as news breaks, news drops, we'll be back either Tom and myself, myself and Marissa, myself and Manny, Sarney, um, Stephen D, whoever, Josh and Aaron, everyone who's part of our team will be out with shows uh, once the news starts to drop. So be on the lookout for that. Be sure to go to the website. DolphinsTalk.com. I wrote a bunch of new articles this week. I have them up. Check them out. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and X at Dolphins Talk. Everyone have a great day. Everyone have a great evening, I should say. Have a great Friday. We'll talk to you again after a while. And folks, don't forget, we must put an end to highway profanity. Thank you for listening to the DolphinsTalk.com podcast. Be sure to visit DolphinsTalk.com every day for all of your latest Miami Dolphins news.